Hello everyone and welcome back to Mila Farms. Well today we're out working on the uh, 2003 Yamaha RX1 Mountain LE. Again we are going to be taking a look at the chain case today. Uh, a couple seasons ago, or it might have been last season, I can't really remember, we had a lower chain case bearing failure and it put a lot of metal shavings and broken pieces into the chain case. We were able to clean that up, replace the broken parts and everything was fine. But I did notice this year when I changed the oil, there was still a little bit of debris, not anything big, but just very uh, fine little metal shavings still floating around in the oil. And I suspect that they flushed down out of the upper bearing in that area, even though we already flushed it really well and got into the oil. So we've taken it on a couple of rides this year. And what we're going to do today is take the cover off the chain case and make sure everything's cleared up in there check everything out and then we're going to change the oil and put the fresh oil back in. So first thing we're going to start out by doing is taking off this side cover. On a normal RX-1 you have a screw back here, mine happens to be broken. Then you have a clip right here which I've replaced the zip tie. Then underneath you have a screw here, here, and here. And then up on top you have a screw here and here. And then there's supposed to be a screw here, but in my case it's also broken and been replaced with a zip tie. Before I owned this, this sled had a pretty good impact on this side here, and so that's what broke those clips, I believe. But the zip ties have worked just fine, done really well for all those seasons, so not too worried about it. So we'll get that side cover off. So here we are inside. First thing we're going to do is start by taking off the emergency brake down here. You have two Allen wrench screws, one there and one right there. If you use an Allen wrench uh, to get those off and then to get the one on the left the rest of the way off, you'll have to actually actuate the emergency brake just a little bit, kind of like that, to get the head to come out all the way. Then this piece will come off and lay to the side. All right, now that we've got the lower emergency brake piece off, we've laid that to the side just over here so it's out of the way. Then we're going to come up here on top and you can see back behind right there. And right there are two screws. We're going to undo both those, and this brake assembly will then come off, and you can lay that to the side. Okay, we've got the brake caliper removed, and the next thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a pair of these snap ring pliers, I think they call them, and take off this little snap ring right here. Then when you do that, you're going to pull the rotor, I guess they would call it, or the disc, you're going to pull that disc off and behind it is going to be a series of washers and spacers. I think there could also, depending on your machine, be a spacer in front of it as well. It looks like mine has one, one little spacer in front of it. So you just want to keep all those spacers in the same order so you can get them back on the same way. So the disc is off. Then you can see right here there's a key. And then here is two more uh, spacers. And then you have this spacer in the back which has a set screw on it somewhere. So right there's the set screw, you wanna take that loose. Now that set screw requires a Torx 20 to get it out. And then you might have to rotate the uh, shaft to be able to get it in a position where you can get to it because you can only access it from here around to the halfway point on the other side. If it's in the top, you cannot access it unless you have a some kind of little right angle driver for your Torx. So then you're gonna go ahead and take this off you want to be very careful because inside of it is an o-ring you don't want to damage that o-ring and then rubbing on the outside of it is where that upper seal rubs now you're to the point that you need to make sure you have your oil bucket ready under normal circumstances if you were just going to change the oil you would access it from the drain pan drain bolt that's on the back side right about here in the track tunnel but in our case we're just going to go ahead and take the cover off and the oil will come out that way so to do that you want to get a metric wrench, I think it may be around a 14, take out this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and that bolt. It looks like some of them might be a little larger, or they may all be the same, but just a metric wrench, find the right size, that'll get you taken care of. We'll loosen those, and as soon as they come loose, we may start getting some oil out the bottom into our pan. So we got all those bolts loose, and you can see the oil is starting to come out. Definitely looks better than it did before. Still has a little bit of debris in it. Nothing large, but just kind of a little grayish hue to it. But I really do believe that we're not having an issue now. I believe that we're having more of a issue with 
debris that's left over, but I could be mistaken on that. So we're gonna let that drain out and then we'll pull the cover off. So there you can see the inside of the chain case with the cover off. This gasket is reusable. So if you just carefully pull the gasket off, a little bit more oil will come out behind it at the bottom there. And then you can set the gasket to the side. So definitely a lot better than it was before with the debris that was in there looking a little bit cleaner. Nothing big, no large chunks or anything, just kind of a little bit of gray material. And I think that's just leftover stuff washing out of crevices and cracks from the issue we had before. So in this case, we have a 40 tooth gear on the bottom, a 20 tooth gear on top. The normal original RX-1 Mountain came with a 40 tooth on the bottom, a 21 tooth on top. And a couple years ago, I swapped out that upper one to make it uh, a little bit lower geared, just a tiny bit for what we were doing with it, um, pulling a sled and things like that. So while I have it apart today, I'm gonna put it back to the original, which is the 21 on top and the 40 on the bottom. We'll put that back together and then I'm gonna keep those parts for spare just in case we need to go back to pulling a sled. It did make a little bit of a difference. You could definitely tell uh, it gave it a little bit more low end power. Loading in the trailer was just a little bit easier, but now it's pretty much reserved to just long distance trail runs. So it would definitely be more conducive to have the higher gearing in there. A little bit better fuel efficiency most likely, and a little bit higher top end, not that you need any higher top end on an RX-1. So we'll go ahead and loosen the adjuster here on the side, take that out of the way, and then since this chain is so close to being the right size, we're gonna need to take off the bottom gear to be able to get the chain off. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there we go, I got the lower and upper bolt and nut taken care of. So what we're gonna do is just pull the bottom bottom gear right off and then this upper gear will slide right off with it and then we'll take the chain off and take the upper gear off there it is with the uh, gears the upper gear off and the chain so now right here in this bag we've got the original that we're gonna put back on one trick you can kind of use before you get everything uh, put back on to get the gears to mesh is you can just hang it on the shaft here and that way everything's meshed where it's supposed to be this upper gear has a label on it that has the numbers as to how many teeth it has. Um, best I can tell it's not directional so you can just put it on whichever way. So we'll go ahead and slip that back in. So there's both the gears back in and we're going to go ahead and tighten up the bolt on the bottom, the nut on the top, and then we'll set the chain tension. So I've got everything tightened back up again. Went ahead and tightened the chain tension. Uh, it's kind of handy that when you tighten this nut at the top, it pulls the tension out of here in all the drivetrain in the machine and then you can adjust the tensioner over here the book says to tighten this up finger tight on there um, I tend to tighten things tighter than normal finger tight it seems like so I always tighten it up finger tight and then back it off just a tiny little bit um, just so it's not too much because you can see it's very tight when it's finger tight in there so tighten it up finger tight back it off just a little bit uh, like maybe a quarter turn at the most and then we'll go ahead and lock that jam nut down and get the cover back on so I went ahead and got the cover put on I put on the spacer that goes right here to make sure that gasket stays centered or that seal stays centered while I'm tightening everything up got the bolts back in and go ahead and tighten those up got all five bolts tightened down then we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the little set screw that's in the bottom here and make sure that's good then we put the two spacers on, put the key in the keyway, which is right here now. Then we'll go ahead and put the brake disc back on. We got the second spacer put on in front of the brake disc and then the keeper is on. One thing I wanna to remember to do, I always keep notes of different things of what I have. So I had 2040 gear ratio in there written down. I'll change that to 21. 40, which is back to stock size. I also wrote it down down there. It's also handy for me just to keep notes like that on different things, you know, tightening things up or whatnot so I can remember them in the future. So we've got eight ounces of the chain case fluid that I use made up here. And we're going to go ahead and dump that in. On this, it doesn't have a vent to let the uh, 
air bubbles out so you want to go really slow so it doesn't uh, bubble over and spill. We've got our 8 ounces of chain case fluid in there and we'll put the dipstick back. And next we'll go ahead and put the uh, brake caliper back on the top and the emergency brake back on the bottom. Alright, so we got this job all finished up. We're going to go ahead and put the side cover back on, resecure it, and everything should be good to go. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember you can't finish a project without getting started.